Hello friends. This is God of Fiction. How are you all so in this video, we will see. What if Naruto awakened demonic power and fell in love with Rias? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video. Kuo Academy. Not that long ago it used to be a girls only school before it became co-ed. Now many male students attend the school but there are still more females, so it was not that much of a difference really. Well except for the fact that some of the guys only went to the school for the girls. Perverts. Now don't get him wrong, Naruto is a perfectly healthy teenage boy with a normal libido, but even he knows when wrong is wrong and how to properly treat women. With respect and kindness. Because of this, he was known as one of the two great gentlemen of Kuo Academy, along with one of his best friends, Yuto Kiba. His looks didn't help with his image either, he had shoulder-length spiky blonde hair that was bright as the sun and gave him the delinquent type look, with ocean blue eyes that had many of the females in the school to get lost in them when they talked with him. And the whisker marks on his cheeks with combined with the fact that his face has long since been cleared of any baby fat gave him the animalistic and feral appearance. He also wore the Kuo Academy uniform, a white long-sleeved, button-down shirt with a black ribbon on the collar a black blazer with white accents and matching black pants and brown dress shoes. Speaking of friends, he could hear one of them now, giggling like the pervert that he was. He turned his head in the tree he was sitting in to see the infamous, perverted trio, the most well-known, and well-avoided, boys at the school. The first was a bald-headed teen and the self-proclaimed lowly Khan, Matsuda. He is a former jock and school sports star until he was introduced to the world of perversion. He is also a part of the school's photo club that earned him two new nicknames, Perverted Baldi, and UAL Harassment Paparazzi. The second was a dark-haired boy wearing glasses that was beside Matsuda looking through a peephole that was currently located on the side of the kendo club's changing room. This was Motohama, a teen who could calculate a female's body measurements just by looking at them. This earned him the nicknames, Perverted Glasses, and Three Sizes Scouter. The last boy who was trying to pull both of said two out of the way so he could sneak a peek was the friend that Naruto was talking about, and as he put it future harem king, Kyodo Issei. A brown-haired teen with black eyes who had an unbuttoned his uniform showing his red top that he wore underneath. Naruto could only sigh as he looked towards the three of them, they really were hopeless. He was just starting to get through to Issei because they were neighbors and he could see they boy as a younger brother of sorts, which was something that the boy's parents liked. Seeing the boys will most likely get caught, and leave Issei to get the beating of a lifetime in the process, Naruto decided to do his brother a favor and get all three of them in trouble. Hey, he was a prankster in his younger years and he still was. Using one of his powers, that he was born with, Naruto moved so fast time seemed like it was standing still. He jumped down from his tree and looked back to see an afterimage of him still sitting there, he then calmly walks over to the trio and grins. He slowly bends down and ties both Matsuda and Motohama's shoelaces together so that they would trip and fall when they got caught and Naruto would laugh at the beating to come. He then pats Issei on the head and jumps back up and watches the show, but first. You perverts, leches, how dare you peek into the girls' locker room. He had to get the show started. When the boys heard the scream they tried to bail as fast as they can only to trip up and fall on Issei in the process. While they were temporarily knocked out and confused the kendo club, which was all girls, took the opportunity to quickly get dressed into their hakama, grabbed their shinai and ran outside to face their peepers, when they got there they saw Naruto sitting in a nearby tree and pointed towards the trio. They all gave him a thank you, and surrounded the teens as they sweated nervously under their gazes and desperately covered their private parts to try and save them from the onslaught to come. Seeing that his work was done Naruto jumped down from the tree and started walking off to his favorite place in the school. Kya. Not the face not the face, while walking away Naruto could only shake his head with a smile on his face as he hoped that the boys, mainly Issei, will be okay. Kya, yes, the face, yes, the face, he really hoped they were okay. DXDDXDDXDDXDDXD while this was going on two pairs of eyes were watching the scene before them with smirks on their faces. Both of which were females wearing the standard Kuo Academy uniform, a white long-sleeved, Buttoned down shirt with a black ribbon on the collar, a black shoulder cape and matching button down corset, and a magenta skirt with white accents. The two were Kuo Academies, two great Oni Samas, Himejima Akeno and Rias Gramari. Akeno is a young woman with a buxom figure with very long black hair and violet eyes. 
Her hair is usually tied in a long ponytail, reaching all the way down to her legs with two strands sticking out from the top and sloping backward, with an orange ribbon keeping it in place. She also wore black knee-high socks that showed off her long, Y legs that kept most of the males drooling at the sight. The other girl, Rias is a young woman who appears to be in her late teens with light skin, blue-green eyes and a buxom figure. Her most distinctive feature is her long, crimson-red thigh-length hair, with a single strand sticking out from the top. Her hair also has loose bangs covering her forehead and side bangs framing her face. She wore white crew-length socks that showed off her smooth and creamy legs that left many of the men in head braces from the neck turning that endured. They both watched with interest as Naruto walked away from the devastating scene before them and both had a glint in their eyes for different reasons. Era, era, those boys seem to be in quite the pickle, wouldn't you say bucko? Yes, they do Akano, but I don't think that's what you're interested in right now is it? Rias said as she saw Akano eye Naruto's retreating form. Akano just stuck her tongue out at Rias as she just rolled her eyes at the girl's behavior. I hope that she never changes, things will certainly be different, and boring if she did. Though said did feel a bit peeved that she was looking at Naruto that way. It was no secret that he was one of the most sought out boys in the school, he was kind, gentle, caring, handsome. Rias blushed a little at the last thought but shook it off easily and continued to think about the blonde haired teen. Naruto Kazama dxdxdxdxdxdxd after leaving Issei and his friend to the one thing in the world that could scare both God and the devil. Naruto moved towards a big oak tree that was located near the back of the school and decided to have his lunch in peace and quiet. He moved up the tall tree and got to his usual branch where he would be most of the time there and saw that someone was already there. The person was a petite 15 year old girl with white hair and hazel eyes. Her front hair has two long bangs going past her shoulders and several loose bangs hanging over her forehead, while the back has a short bob cut. She also wears a black cat shaped hair clip on both sides of her hair. She wears the Kuo Academy Girls School uniform, without the shoulder cape. Naruto smiled as he saw his usual lunch buddy sitting there currently eating some manju with a straight look on her face. Naruto could tell that she was hiding her emotions for a reason, but he didn't push for any information and just left her be. Hello, Kaneko chan. He said quietly to the girl as she looked towards him and gained a small smile on her face. She always enjoyed Naruto's company. Naruto just sat next to Kaneko and took out his bento and started eating. They didn't need to talk that much as they both enjoyed the sound of the wind blowing against the trees and the birds chirping up above. They had both met the same way one day as Naruto was trying to get away from some of his more daring fangirls and decided to climb up a tree when they weren't looking and hide until they passed. Or the bell rang. He didn't care either way. When he was up there he noticed that he wasn't alone and quickly turned around to spot Kaneko eating some sweets and looking at him with some curiosity in her eyes despite the fact that she had a blank face. After begging her to not let the girls find out he was there and some bargaining that involved a mountain load of different sweets Kaneko accepted and let him come up to the same spot if he ever needed it. Ever since then he had tried and gotten to know Kaneko and had succeeded somewhat, she managed to tell him some of her likes and dislikes along with her hobbies which included finding stray cats on the street and taking them in which he found cute and generous of her. He was brought out of his thoughts when he felt Kaneko tug on his sleeve slightly, he looked over to her and saw that she had a look in her eye that made him smile a little and stop eating. He then went and opened his bag and pulled out a small book with a black cover and opened it to a certain page and cleared his throat. Kaneko just got comfortable and started to listen as he started reading aloud. My friend, do you fly away now? To a world that abhors you and I? All that awaits you is a somber morrow no matter where the winds may blow. My friend, your desire is the bringer of life, the gift of the goddess. Even if the morrow is barren of promises nothing shall forestall my return. As Naruto finished reading he could see that Kaneko was swaying back and forth like she was listening to her favorite nursery song and was in a state of pure bliss, but Naruto could tell that she wasn't like this through the whole poem as he saw her flinch at the mention of the word, goddess. Naruto had confirmed his thoughts about Kaneko long ago but wanted for the girl to be her normal self whenever he was around so he didn't invade that part of her life and just let it be. As Kaneko was beginning to get her senses back the bell rang indicating that lunch was over and they had to go back to class. Kaneko had a frown on her face when she thought about that but stopped that when she felt Naruto rub the top of her head like a cat as she leaned into his touch. He was good with his hands. Really good. She looked up with a red hue on her cheeks as Naruto smiled at her and packed his book away. Looks like we have to go Kaneko-chan, I will see you tomorrow okay? 
Naruto said as Kaneko just nodded her head a little and jumped down from the tree and quickly made her way towards the girls' bathrooms. Naruto just waited a little while before jumping down from the tree and walking off to class, things would look suspicious if both he and Kaneko jumped down from the same tree at the same time and people were around. Rumor would spread quickly at a school like this as Kaneko was considered to be the school's mascot and Naruto the prince of the school. He really didn't need any more attention than he had. DXDDXDDXDDXDDXD, ah, being a teenager is the worst. At this rate jerking off to porn is the closest thing I'm ever gonna get to doing it before I go off to college which means I'll be a virgin forever and die alone. Naruto had to sweat drop at what Issei had said about his life. After school had finished Naruto and Issei had walked home together like they usually do and had stopped on on a bridge that was close to their homes for a quick break. Issei was currently sulking about his perverted life while lowering his head to the railing while Naruto had his back to it and leaned against it. He just put a hand on Issei's shoulder and tried to encourage his little brother. Now, now it not over yet Issei. You still have two more years here before you go and I'm sure that you will find someone eventually. Naruto said as Issei looked at him with hope in his eyes. Really, he questioned the man he considered to be his older brother, even though he might not say it. Yes I'm sure, just give it time. I mean it's not like you will not find some and live alone and die with nothing but cats for the rest of your life right? Naruto said but soon regretted it as Issei once again had his head down in sadness. I'm gonna die alone, Issei mumbled out as Naruto sighed and went back to his happy place. Naruto then stood straight up as he sensed a strong being getting closer to them and readied his powers if need be. As he saw the being come into his field of vision he saw a young girl wearing a school uniform, which consisted of a dark red jacket with the letter P. Embroidered in gold, a white undershirt, a red bow, and a green skirt with a thin white strip around the lower end of it. He widened his eyes as she walked up to them with a fake smile on her face that Naruto could see from a mile away. Rainer, what the hell is she doing here? Excuse me, you're Issei Hyodo from Kuo Academy right? Issei just looked towards the girl and had a confused look on his face as he didn't recognize the uniform she was wearing but didn't care as she looked hot. Yeah, that's me. Anyo, she tried to find the right words to say but she couldn't find them, at least that was what Issei saw as Naruto continued to stare at her and her poor acting. Hey, if there's anything I can help you with, actually, I just wanted to ask you a quick question, are you seeing anyone right now? Naruto narrowed his eyes even further as Issei gained an odd look on his face now and not really that's wonderful she said as naruto could see she had a gleam in her eye it is issei said ridiculously as the girl looked at him like as she was about to ask him something embarrassing you um would you go out with me what dot did you just say issei managed to say as he didn't believe what he just heard the girl went on to explain that she had been watching issei for some time and thought saying that he seemed gentle and handsome as issei could not believe what he was hearing what I want to say is, will you please be my boyfriend, she said as Issei looked at her for a few seconds before his face morphed into a shocked look. Whoa, is this for real? Naruto had a sleepless night, he was busy think about that Rainer, or Yuma as she called herself from yesterday and what she could have wanted with Issei. He knew that she harbored ill intentions towards the pervert but he did not know why, though, he needed to pay a visit to a certain someone tonight about this and get information out of him. As Naruto was walking towards school he saw Issei up ahead with, Yuma, next to him as Matsuda and Motohama looked at the teen in shock and horror. No, please God. What? Issei smiled brightly as he turned towards Yuma. Guys, this is Yuma Amano, my new girlfriend. He then walked up to them and whispered. And here's the best part, she, asked, me. The two perverts just stood there in shock as Issei and Yuma made their way past them and walked towards the school. That traitor! Motohama shouted as both perverts had tears running down their faces. Naruto just shook his head and walked past them as well and got ready for another day at school. DXDDXDDXDDXDDXD It was currently the last class of the day for many people as Naruto lay on the bank near the track field and watched the clouds pass by and calmed his mind. Naruto Senpei. He groaned slightly as someone interrupted his meditation and looked over to see that it was his friend and fellow gentleman Yuto Kiba. He was a handsome young man with short blonde hair, gray eyes and a mole under his left eye. He wears the Kuo Academy Boys School uniform, which consists of a black blazer with white accents over a white, long-sleeved shirt with a black ribbon on the collar, matching black pants, and brown dress shoes. Oh, Kiba. What brings you here? Naruto asked his fellow blonde. 
I was just passing by on my way to my club when I saw you. But what are you doing, Senpei? Shouldn't you be in class? Kiba asked as Naruto sat up and stretched. I don't have class last period, so I decided to clear my head a little by watching the clouds. You should try it sometimes, it's very relaxing. And I told you already, you can just call me Naruto. Naruto said as his fellow prince raised an eyebrow. Is there something on your mind? It's nothing really, just that I was with Issei the other day and saw the girl ask to be his boyfriend. I still can't believe it, he said as Kiba gained a surprised look. So it is true, Issei kun really does have a girlfriend. Kiba commented as Naruto nodded and stood up as they both heard the bell rang, signaling the end of the school day. Well, I guess I'll see you later then, Senpei, Kiba said as he walked off. How many times do I have to tell him, call me Naruto? He shouted at the retreating blonde as he ignored him and kept on walking. Naruto just sighed and picked up his bag and made his way to the front gate. On his way home, Naruto was thinking about how to best deal with Issei and his supposed date with Rainer while at the same time wondering what the fallen angel was doing in Ko in all places. With a sigh, Naruto kept walking and looked up to the sky with one thought on his mind. I hope he doesn't drag me to go fishing with him this time. A date? Issei asked as he and Yuma stood on the same bridge they first met the next day. Yes. This Sunday, can you do it? Yuma asked. Yes, sure, that sounds great, I can do it anytime you want. Issei said excitedly. Yuma sighed and smiled at him. That's great. I'll see you later then. Yuma said as she walked away and Issei waved to her before shouting out in joy and started skipping away. As Yuma made her way down the bridge she stopped momentarily when she heard her name being called out and turned to see Naruto walking towards her with a smile on his face. Oh, hello. You were Issei's friend I saw the other day it's nice to meet you properly, Yuma said with a bow. You really don't remember me, do you? Rainer, Naruto said as Rainer looked at him in shock before narrowing her eyes at him. How do you know who I am? Rainer said in a more mature voice as the air around the two became thick and tense. Don't you remember staying at that hotel not far from here a couple of years ago as Azazel's bodyguard? The blonde at the reception. Naruto said as Rainer, with her eyes narrowed, though about what he said. Her eyes widened as she looked back at Naruto as he still had his smile on his face. Naruto? She asked as he nodded. I hardly recognized you, what are you doing here? That's actually what I was going to ask you, why are you going after Issei? He knows nothing about the supernatural world, Naruto asked. He may not know about beings like me but he is a threat to us. I have orders to remove potential, sacred gear, users so that they couldn't be used by our enemies. Rainer explained her mission as Naruto looked at her with a raised eyebrow. Sacred gear. Rainer, if Issei has a gear then he wouldn't be terminated because of it. Azazel would just have him under observation because of his fascination with those things. Who ordered you to kill him? Naruto asked, dreading the answer. Kokebiel sama did. Why? Rainer said as she started to get scared at what Naruto was saying. Rainer. Kokebiel has broken away from the Grigori, he has been for quite some time now. Naruto said in a serious manner. W what? T that C can't be true, we saw him just at the Grigori headquarters the other day. The fallen angel said in denial. Well I just talked with Azazel yesterday and he told me that you were not supposed to be on any mission at the moment. Naruto said as Rainer gained a scared look. Why you t told Azazel Sama? I'm sorry, but I had to. Naruto said as he looked at her apologetically. I see Issei as a little brother, a perverted and stupid one, but a brother nonetheless. So when I see someone try to harm in any way, I will protect him. The two stood there in silence for what felt like hours to the fallen angel before she spoke up. W what will happen to me, and my mission with the Hyodo kid? She asked as Naruto sighed and raked his hand through his hair. I will talk with Azazel about this whole thing, but he would probably tell you to erase everyone's memory of you and lay low for a while. Who else is in on this? You said before that there was more than just you here. Naruto asked. I'm here with three other angels, Kalarner, Mittelt, and Donaseek. I know Kalarner and Mittelt will go along with me when I tell them what's going on, but Donaseek. It's fine, just tell them what's happening and bring them over to my place. You still remember where the hotel is right? Naruto said as Rainer nodded. Good, I will go to Azazel now and tell him what's going on, he owes me a couple of favors anyways so I will use one of them now. See you later. And with that Naruto walked away towards the leader of the Grigori's house while Rainer flew away to tell her companions.
They both had a long night ahead of them. What do you mean you don't remember her? Issei's screaming could be heard all around the academy as many people were startled by the voice and wondered what it was. Naruto's ear twitched at the voice and what was said and had a questioning look on his face. The weekend had just passed and Naruto was having a headache with all the things that had happened. He had talked to Azazel about Rainer and the other angel's situation and the governor of the Grigori had not been pleased with what Kokobiel was up to but knew that it wasn't the other angel's fault as they were just following orders, but at least they could have checked up with him first. Azazel had politely asked the blonde to house the fallen at his place until the whole incident was over, to which the blonde agreed. When Naruto got home he was treated to the sight of three beautiful angels in his apartment all wearing different outfits that made him almost have a nosebleed. Sitting on the couch in his living room was Rainer and two of the other fallen angels that she had mentioned about. Rainer had changed from her, Yuma, form into her normal form as she was taller, taking on a more mature appearance, and her eyes changed, taking on a darker tone. Her clothing now consisting of black, strap-like objects resembling leather around and under her s, a thong-like piece held around her hips by three thin straps, gloves that run right up her arms with small lengths of chains hanging from them, shoulder guard-like objects on her shoulders with three large spikes sprouting from her right shoulder, and black thigh-high heel boots. Sitting next to her was Cala Warner, who was a tall and buxom woman with long, navy blue hair that obscured her right eye and brown eyes. She wore a violet, trenchcoat-like top with a wide collar, a matching miniskirt that showed off her long legs, and black-heeled shoes. The trenchcoat top was open at her chest, giving view to her s and cleavage. She also wore a gold necklace around her neck. He found her to be quite arrogant and was looking down at him like he was weak just because he was human despite the situation they were in a quiet sparring session, or as he put it, but whooping later and her thoughts on the blonde changed. On the far side of the couch eating a slice of his strawberry cheesecake was Mittelt. She was a petite-looking girl with blonde hair styled in twin short side ponytails and blue eyes. She wore a gothic Lolita attire, which consisted of a black Lolita dress with white frills, a large black bow on the front, and a green jewel embedded on the collar, white thigh-high socks, and black shoes. She also wore a large black bow on top of her hair. She was an energetic and joyful girl who had a fondness for sweets just like Kaneko and held some respect for the blonde if he was able to be friends with Azazel. After clearing his mind of thoughts that would have made him fall if he was an angel Naruto told all of them the situation that they were in and told them that Azazel had ordered them to stay here until it was sorted. The angels agreed to the accommodation as Naruto told them that they could choose any room they wanted. Now however Naruto was confused at what he heard his perverted little brother shouted, he couldn't have remembered Rainer could he? His answer came later on during the day when he ran into Issei during lunch. Naruto was happily eating away at a homemade bento that Rainer had made as thanks for letting the angel stay at his place when a shadow loomed over him, he looked up to see his little brother panting as he was trying to catch his breath. Issei what happened? Did you peep on the kendo club again? Naruto asked Issei as the brown-haired boy looked at him. Naruto, please tell me you remember. Issei said as Naruto looked at him curiously. Remember what? Yuma-chan, the girl that asked me out on the bridge the other day. Issei shouted as Naruto's eyes widened for a fraction of a second before returning to normal, completely missed by the boy. I know you can remember her, you were there when she asked me to be her boyfriend. Sorry Issei, I have no idea who or what you are talking about. Naruto lied to Issei as he was thinking what the hell was going on. It can't be, Issei said in shock. Even you don't remember. There's no way. Issei, is everything okay? Naruto asked with concern as he looked at him. Sorry for wasting your time, I have to go. Issei said before rushing off leaving a saddened Naruto in his wake. What's going on? I'm sure that Rainer had erased everyone's memory of her existence, so why does Issei remember? Naruto thought as his eyes narrowed. Could it be his sacred gear that Rainer talked about? It is a possibility. If a sacred gear, as strong enough simple mind manipulation spells won't work on the person, even if they are using the power unconsciously. A melodic voice inside of Naruto's head explained as the blonde raised an eyebrow. It's been a while since I heard your voice, what have you been up to? Nothing much apart from sleep and paint. It does get boring in here from time to time. Sorry about that I will try to make things more entertaining for you. I know how you can make things more entertaining for us na, ru, tu, kun. Another voice said as this one was more sensual and mature. Yami stop that, Narutaki, don't listen to that woman. Come on Hikari, you know you want him too. 
Just admit it. Yami said as Naruto could hear Hikari. Ep. And the sound of clothes moving. On. S stop that immediately, Yami. You can't on. Naruto cut the connection between his two inner partners before he got a nosebleed from their actions and wondered how he got them as avatars for his sacred gears. Moving on to his thoughts before Hikari spoke up Naruto wondered if Issei's sacred gear has started to reveal itself and knew that its power could draw unwanted attention like it did with Kokobil. He needed to do something about it. DxdDxdDxdDxdDxd. After school had ended Naruto had decided to follow his surrogate brother home to make sure that he was safe from anyone or anything that might try to harm him. He followed Issei as he made his way to a park and stood near a fountain as he looked at his reflection. Yuma-chan. I know you are real. Where are you? Issei said as Naruto gave him a solemn look. So that's what happened. A new voice entered the park as Naruto and Issei widened their eyes and looked towards the figure. Walking towards Issei was a middle-aged looking man with short black hair and dark blue eyes that could barely be seen under a black fedora on his head. His attire consisted of a pale violet trench coat over a white dress shirt with a matching ascot, black pants, and shoes. The sky above them started to change into a dark purplish color as the man walked closer towards Issei. It is unfortunate for you to run into me this day, I am angry you see. My so-called comrades have abandoned their mission and left me to do all the dirty work, not that I mind, killing you will be an easy task. The man said as a blue spear of light materialized in his hand. Shit, that must be Donaseep that Rainer was talking about. Naruto thought in a panic as the fallen angel aimed at Issei. My name is Donaseek. I pray you will find happiness in the next life. Donaseek said as he threw the light towards Issei. The brunette looked at the incoming projectile with fear in his eyes as it neared him and felt unable to move from his spot. He then saw a flash of yellow as the spear was knocked away by something that landed in front of him. Or rather someone. Looking closer Issei saw a familiar mop of blonde hair in his school's uniform stand in front of him protectively as snapped out of his shock. N. Naruto. Said blonde turned his head towards him and smiled slightly at him. Hey Issei, you're not hurt are you? Naruto asked. And no, and not really, but what are you doing here? And who the heck is that guy? Issei said as he pointed at Donaseek. Someone who is out of your league Issei. I need you to run away as far away as you can from here. Naruto looked back at the fallen angel and cracked his knuckles. B but, we can talk tomorrow, Issei. Now go. Naruto shouted as Issei looked at him in shock as he never heard him yell like that before. He then slowly made his way towards the entrance of the park as Donaseek sneered at the blonde. Who the hell are you? My name's Naruto Kazama, and I'm going to kick your ass. Naruto said as Donaseek scoffed at him. Like a human like you can even hit me, let alone beat me. You're a thousand years too young to take me on. Donaseek said as he launched a light spear toward the blonde as he easily dodged it. What? said a shocked Donaseek as he saw the blonde dodge his light spear. He then started launching multiple light spears at Naruto as he continued to dodge and deflect them away before Donaseek made one final light spear and poured a lot of energy into it and threw it at the blonde. Naruto saw the spear coming and narrowed his eyes as he felt the power radiating off of it. He jumped and spun in the air as the spear passed under him but caught it before it fully passed him and threw it back at the angel as he landed and spun around to face him. Ah. Donaseek yelled in pain as the spear pierced him in the shoulder as glared at Naruto. You maggot. He gritted his teeth in pain as Naruto had a smirk on his face that pissed him off. That's what you get for trying to hurt my friend. Naruto said. Donaseek took the spear out of his shoulder as it disappeared and looked at the blonde. Your friend. You mean that boy. Donaseek asked. Naruto nodded his head as the fallen angel started to laugh. Ha 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 ha. You actually care for that weakling. If that's so then trying to protect him from this. He then summoned a light spear and held it up as Naruto tensed and prepared to stop it when it was thrown when all of a sudden it vanished. What the? Naruto thought as he saw the spear disappear. He then heard the sound of someone screaming from far behind him and widened his eyes as he looked at him. Issei. He then sprinted towards the source of the scream and saw Issei lying on the ground with a hole in his chest and saw him slowly losing consciousness. Issei. Naruto shouted as he knelt near Issei and turned him so that the brunette was on his back and held his head. Stay with me Issei. Just hang in there. N na Naruto. Dot ni. Issei said weakly as Naruto widened his eyes. He had never called him that before. How pitiful. 
Donny Seek's voice rung out as he hovered in the air with black bird-like wings coming out of his back. Shows just how weak he was. The weak deserve to die. Ha ha ha. As soon as the words left his mouth he was hit with an enormous amount of pressure bearing down on his shoulders as he struggled to stay in the air. Naruto knelt near Issei as a black and red aura appeared around him and his bangs shadowed his eyes. He slowly stood up and turned towards the fallen angel in the air. Donesik drifted back a bit as he saw Naruto's face and knew that he just said the wrong thing. Naruto was furious. You bastard. You killed my little brother and just laugh it off. You will fucking pay. Naruto screamed as his energy skyrocketed and Donesik started to sweat at the large amounts of demonic energy the teen produced. He didn't even sense the kid was a devil. Meanwhile, Issei, who was barely conscious, heard what Naruto said and a tear fell out of his eye. Naruto ni. Yami-chan. Lend me your power, I'm going to end this. Naruto thought in rage as he looked towards his target. You got it Naru-kun. Yami said happily at the sight her master releasing this much power and rubbed her legs together at the sight of him. Donesik watch as the aura around Naruto died down as the blonde extended both arms in front of him, his open palms facing each other his fingers pointed towards him. Sparks of black lightning generated between the blonde's arms, growing larger and larger until both his arms were completely clad in black lightning. Dark charged particle cannon. Naruto then fired a massive, concentrated beam of the black lightning at the fallen angel as he looked at it beam in fear and tried to fly away. When the attack died down Naruto saw no trace of the angel anywhere, he didn't care if he was dead or not he needed to focus on Issei for now. He made his way towards the brunette and looked in sadness as his eyes looked devoid of life and began to cry. Issei, I'm so sorry, I couldn't protect you. He whispered out as he clutched Issei's jacket. As he let go of his jacket he noticed something in Issei's pocket start to glow. What is that? Naruto asked as a piece of paper flew out of Issei's pocket and floated in the air as a large red seal appeared. That symbol. Yami's voice spoke up. It's the symbol of the Grimori family of the underworld. Are you sure Yami-chan? Naruto asked as the seal started to glow. Yes I am. I know all of the symbols of the devil clans in the underworld to heart. You are about to get a visitor Naru-kun. Yami said as Naruto nodded and wiped his tears away. As the seal glowed a female figure appeared from it and Naruto widened his eyes at who it was. Rias Grimori, one of the academy's onisamas in all her beautiful glory with a pair of dark bat-like wings behind her. Sigh. I wish it didn't have to come to this, it can't be helped I suppose. Time to bring him back to life. Rias said as she focused on Issei, placing a pawn chess piece on what was left of his chest. She was surprised to find that one was not enough to revive him and use the rest of the pawns until they were all gone and sighed as his wound healed and he began to breathe. He must have a powerful gear to cost me all eight of my pawns. I'll say. Rias' eyes widened as she turned to see Naruto standing behind her. I didn't even sense him. Naruto-san, what are you doing here? She said nervously and wondered what to do with him. Don't worry Rias-san, I know all about who you are, and your race. Naruto said shocking the girl. I was just here to make sure that Issei was safe and well, he trailed off as he looked at the blood around Issei. I I see. Well, I think someone should take Issei here home before his parents become worried. Rias said after coming out of her shock. I can take him. He lives not far from me. We can talk more tomorrow Rias-san. Naruto said as he picked up Issei. That's fine, and you can just call me Rias. Naruto nodded and went on his way towards Issei's house. Rias looked at Naruto's form and rubbed her temples at the thoughts racing through her head as she thought about the blonde and what he knew. Did he know about Akino and the others? Was he a threat to them? Did he have something to do with the fallen angel disappearing on Issei? Just who are you Naruto? It was another peaceful morning in the town of Kuo as people began to rise from their beds ready for another day on the road that is life. Well it was peaceful for most people. Wake up Narutaki. Hikari's voice rang in Naruto's head as the blonde in question jumped out of bed and onto the ceiling above him. As Naruto dug his fingers into the ceiling from the initial fright of being woken up like he was as a small ball of white light came out of his body and a figure materialized next to him. The figure was a true goddess in all aspects, she was beautiful a woman with a buxom figure and very delicate facial features appearing to be in her early twenties. She had long, sweeping white hair that was almost silk-like cascading down her back and ended just above her shapely rear with blonde highlights, the tips were a hazel tint, 
Her eyes were a golden color they would make anyone who looked into them feel weak in the knees, regardless of gender. She wore an elegant white kimono with a black lining which was held up by a yellow obi that pushed her large bust up they were easily bigger than Rias along with being barefoot. She also had a light colored circle on her left which was hidden by her kimono. Hikari watched as Naruto dropped to the floor and landed on his back with a grunt. He then put his hand to his face to block the sunlight starting to seep through his window and glared at it. Stupid son. I swear I will extinguish you one of these days. Naruto growled out as the sun gods across the world shivered unconsciously. Well you won't be doing that today, you need to talk to this Rias and sort things out with her and her peerage. You already missed school yesterday because you didn't want to face her. Hikari said as Naruto sat up and sighed. I know, I just feel a little tired from all the paperwork I did last night is all. Naruto said as he stood up and stretched the cramps out of his body. Hikari blushed as she gazed upon Naruto's form, all of the training she and Yami put him through in his younger years had really paid off. He was only wearing black pajama pants with a red flame design on both pant legs and was topless showing off his muscled body which was what you would expect an Olympic athlete to have. His broad chest and shoulders could make any female hard-pressed not to drool at the sight of them and made them feel small when enveloped in them and a nicely developed six-pack that looked like they were carved from marble. Hikari quickly looked away with a fierce blush that spread across her angelic features as the blonde Adonis looked at her. Carrie chan are you okay? I I'm f fine Naruchi, J just fine. Time to get dressed and go to school. Hikari stuttered as Naruto looked at her with a raised eyebrow before shrugging. Um, why does he have to go? Stay here with me Naru-kun. Yami's voice spoke up as Naruto and Hikari looked towards the blonde's bed and saw the covers move before they rose up and revealed Yami's form. She looked around her early twenties like Hikari with a voluptuous figure, she had long black colored hair with a purple tint that reached her thighs with grey highlights at the tips which curled up slightly with bangs framing her face that reached her bust, which was the same size as Hikari's, that had ribbons around them. She wore a black kimono with a red interior that was held up by a purple obi that pushed her bust up, the right sleeve of the kimono was draping down slightly giving a view of her large ass and a dark colored crescent moon on her left. Hikari looked at where Yami was and her face was now red with rage. Yami. What were you doing in Narutaki's bed? Yami looked at Hikari with a smirk as she spoke. I thought Naru-kun would be cold and lonely at night so I decided to accompany him and keep him nice and warm. I thought I felt something slip into my bed at night, so that was you. Naruto questioned as he had already put on his school pants and was currently putting on his top. Yami looked toward the blonde with both lust and love in her vermilion-colored eyes as she walked over to him and s her arm around his waist. Yes it was, I'm so happy that you noticed. It means that you don't mind if women come in here and ravish you during the night. Have I finally managed to corrupt my little Naru, Chan? Yami said in a sing-along voice as Naruto's face gained a pink hue. Even putting up with the woman who could be considered the original succubus for years she still knew how to make him at least slightly embarrassed. Yami smirked at his reaction and decided to make her move. Or is it that you knew it was me and decided that I should ravish you instead? She then slowly moved her hands down his chiseled abs, taking in every bump and crest of the hard surface and made her way to the belt of his pants. As she was about to claim her prize she was hit in the forehead with what looked like a white kanai made of light, she then fell backward and lay comically on the floor with a fountain of blood leaking out of the wound as a blushing Hikari, who had her arm stretched out, glared at her. Stop you ally harassing Narutaki. Have you no shame? Hikari asked as Yami stood up with a smile on her face as if nothing ever happened. Nope. Not one ounce. She said chipperly before her smile became sadistic. You already know this so why did you stop me? Naru-kun and I were about to have some fun time. I will not allow you to take advantage of Narutaki you harlot. He doesn't need you in his life. Hikari shouted as sparks ignited between them with Yami's being black and Hikari's being white. But Naru-kun does need me in his life, right Naru-kun? Naru-kun. They both turned around to see that Naruto was not there and a note was left for them. When you two have finished having your little argument, I'm off to school, Rainer and the others had already prepared my lunch. See you when it's over. Naruto. It finished with a chibi Naruto giving them a blank stare and a peace sign at the bottom. Hikari and Yami blinked at the note before they screamed. Narutaki. Naru-kun. DXD 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 DXD. Sigh. Another day, another dollar, and another stack of paperwork for me when I get back home. 
Naruto said as he looked out the window of the classroom at the end of the school day. The day had been surprisingly normal from what he could tell. He hadn't seen Rias all day so he was unable to have a talk with her about what happened and that made him slightly nervous at what the red-headed girl might do to him when she finally finds him. He sighed again as he started to pack his bag to go home when he heard a commotion at the door. Looking over he saw most of the males in the class swarming around the door as the school mascot walked into the class. Look it's Kaneko-chan. She's so cute. I wonder what she's here for. Naruto watched with an amused look as Kaneko walked past the Legion of Lolicons as he called them but they all gained depressed looks as the girl didn't even look any of them in the eye. Poor perverted bastards. He then watched as Kaneko walked right up to him and gave him her usual blank face. Hi there Kaneko-chan. What can I do for you? Naruto asked. I was sent here by Bucho to come and get you. She said in a monotone voice as Naruto thought about it. Bucho. You mean Rias san Kaneko nodded as Naruto stood up. That's fine, I've been meaning to talk to her anyway. Might as well get it out of the way. Naruto said as he followed the white-haired girl out of the classroom, ignoring the shouts of outrage from the boys inside. After walking for a while Naruto and Kaneko made it to a lovely three-story building, with the third story serving as a clock tower. It was painted white with a black roof with vines creeping up to the second story. As they made their way inside Naruto looked around and saw that the inside of the building had a Victorian-style vibe going on that oddly suited it for some reason. When Naruto entered the main room he was impressed with the design, the interior was a wood-paneled room with Victorian-style couches and chairs along the walls with a few candles lit here and there for effect most likely. Looking forward Naruto saw the main area of the room had a big desk near the window that was most likely for Rias work and in the middle were two couches around a small table. Please wait here senpai, Bucho will be here shortly. Kaneko said as she went into the kitchen to grab something to eat, Naruto just stood there for a moment before walking over to one of the couches and sat down to wait for Rias to arrive. A short while later Kaneko came out with a small plate of yokan and sat next to Naruto as he started petting her like he usually did and she leaned into the touch a bit. Era, era, what do we have here? Naruto turned his head to the room's entrance to see Akino standing there with her usual smile on her face as she looked at the two. Oh, hi there Akino-san. It's nice to see you. Naruto said as he used his other hand to wave at her. They were both in the same classes together but he never actually got to know the girl on a personal level before. But seeing the situation he was in he may get to know her a bit better now. It's nice to see you too, but please just call me Akino. In that case you can call me Naruto. The blonde said as Akino nodded. The sound of running water brought Naruto's attention to the corner of the room and saw a shower curtain with a shadowy figure of Rias if Naruto was seeing it right. Is that what I think it is? Akino giggled and walked over to him. Yes it's a shower. What else could it be? Rias is in there at the moment although I'm sure she won't mind if you join her. The Yamato Natashiko said in an effort to make the blonde blush like a schoolboy at the thought of being with her king, unfortunately for her it would not work. I'm sure that she's fine by herself. Besides, I might make her dirtier if you catch my drift. Naruto said with a saucy grin as Akino blushed a little but shook it off and smiled back at him. Seems like she'll have some fun with him. None of them noticed Kaneko's eye twitching at the blonde's words. Akino put some tea down in front of him as he thanked her for the drink and continued to pat Kaneko. After waiting for a while the doors to the club room opened with Kiba walking in with Issei in tow. Bucho, I've brought Issei Hyodo just like you asked. Kiba called out to Rias in the shower. Thank you Kiba-kun, I will be out in a minute. Rias called out. Issei looked towards the source of the Rias, voice and immediately gained a perverted look on his face. Holy crap, this club room has a shower and Rias is in it. What did I do to be this lucky? Issei thought as Kaneko looked at him and stared at him blankly. What a disgusting face. Kaneko said in her usual voice as Issei finally noticed her and who she was sitting next to. N Naruto. Hey Issei, are you okay from the other day? Naruto asked as he slowed his petting of Kaneko as the white-haired girl began to quietly whimper from his actions. Don't worry, I'm not stopping. He whispered as she let it continue. She had really gotten addicted to his petting. Yeah, I guess. But what's going on? What am I doing here? Issei said looking around the club more. Don't worry everything will be explained once Bucho is out. Akino said as she walked towards Issei. Nice to meet you. I'm Akino Himahima, the vice president of the Occult Research Club. She said as she bowed. And nice to meet you too. I'm Issei Hiodo. 
Issei introduced himself with a blush on his face and scratched the back of his head. A moment later Ria stepped out of the shower, drying her hair and wearing her school uniform as she smiled. Sorry to have kept you two waiting. Your house didn't have a shower so I had to have one here. Th that's okay. I didn't mind. Issei nodded in understanding as he remembered the way he woke up this morning with Rias in his bed wearing only her bra and panties. And I see that Naruto is here as well, this is perfect. Now then Issei, I would like to officially welcome you to the Occult Research Club. Rias said as she made her way to the desk at the back of the room with Akino and Kiba sitting on the couch left of her and Issei sitting next to Naruto and a slightly happy Kaneko. Ah, thanks. But you should know that the club is nothing but a facade. It's a mere hobby for us. The president of the club explained. What do you mean? Issei asked as he leaned forward in anticipation. I'm going to be blunt with you, almost everyone here is a devil. She said getting straight to the point, not seeing the point in hiding the truth from the boy any longer. And the winged man that killed you, and the one from yesterday were fallen angels. While the confusion between us and them is understandable the life to serve God but have given into their impure ideas and thoughts and have fallen into the underworld. While us devils form packs and receive an offering from humans to increase our power, fallen angels, on the other hand, manipulate humans into doing their dirty work and try to destroy us devils. Rhea stopped to give Issei a chance to absorb the information. And of course there is the more recognizable angel sent by God to kill us devils, so we are constantly defending ourselves from all sides. Angels, fallen angels, devils. These three races make up the three main powers of the world and has been going on since ancient times, are you following me so far? Rias asked her newest pawn as he just scratched his head and laughed nervously. Naruto watched his, little brother, from the corner of his eye, interested in his reaction. This is some freaky stuff you're telling me. Devils, fallen angels and all that crap it's a bit too much. Yuma Amano. Issei's expression changed as he opened his eyes in shock. You remember her? don't you? She was your girlfriend for a little bit after all. Rias said with a smile as Issei focused his attention on her. I I don't know where you heard her name, but I don't want to talk about her with this occult stuff. Issei said with a little anger in his voice. Naruto could tell this was a sensitive subject for the boy but he would never know how he feels. Rias responded to Issei's comment by pulling out a photo and placing it on the desk in front of him. The brunette looked at the photo and gasped. Yuma-chan. She did exist Issei. What you remember about wasn't a dream. But. Dot how is this possible? No one remembers her. She's a fallen angel Issei. A supernatural being. Naruto said for the first time in the conversation as he stopped petting Kaneko, much to her disappointment. Issei focused his attention on the blonde as he continued to explain. Some supernatural beings like angels and devils can and manipulate or erase certain things from a person's mind. In this case she erased her very presence, memories, or recordings of her from the people at this school, including you. I see, so is that why my parents weren't acting normal, at breakfast this morning? Issei asked as he looked towards Rias as the girl nodded and explained that she manipulated his parents' memories to not escalate the previous situation they were in. Wait, but you said that she even erased my memories, right? So why do I still remember her? The best thing I can think of is what she was originally after. A sacred gear, Naruto said with a serious face. Sacred gear, that fallen angel from yesterday was saying something about that. Issei tried to remember what the angel said about it yesterday but could not remember about it. I can shed some light on this, Akino said. A sacred gear is a very intense and unique power bestowed upon certain humans. In fact many notable people throughout history have had these powers. Yours must have been strong enough to protect you from having your memories erased. The thing is that some of these gears can be so great that they pose a threat to some of those in the underworld. Rias finished for her queen. Issei, please raise your left hand. The boy quickly did as he was instructed and stood up with his hand raised high in the air. L like this. Yes. Now close your eyes and imagine the strongest thing that comes to mind. Then focus hard on that thing. And now, really, it's just so sudden. Focus Issei. Rias said in a more demanding tone as the boy shut his eyes and began to focus. 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 Holy crap I can almost see through her panties. Wait. Focus. Focus. I can't focus any harder. Issei said in defeat as he lowered his arm and breathed deeply. Are you sure that I have this, sacred gear, or whatever, maybe it was a mistake. It was no mistake, 
A fallen angel targeted you and another one killed you. Rias said. But if that's the case then where did Yuma go? And how am I still alive for that matter? Issei said as he stood up abruptly. I don't know the whereabouts of Yuma or why she backed off suddenly but I do know how you're alive. Rais said as she picked up a flyer with the words, your wish will be granted, on it in the magic circle that Naruto saw the other night. Do you remember this? Yeah, the moment of your death I was summoned with this flyer. Rias explained as Naruto widened his eyes as he remembered that night. So on that day you were reborn as an honored member of the House of Grimori. My family holds the rank of Duke, and my newest servant. Rias flared her devil wings out as the rest of her peerage followed suit while Naruto stayed seated. Issei took a step back in shock as he saw the bat-like wings sprouting out of everyone's back before he felt an odd sensation on his back and looked behind him to see that he had wings as well. No way. Are they telling the truth? Am I a devil? My life as a human is over. Issei thought as his wings, retracted, and looked towards everyone else as they didn't have their wings out either. So, every one of you guys is a devil. Not quite. I'm still human. Naruto said as he stood up. Yes. That reminds me, Rias said gaining everyone's attention. How did you know that I was a devil when I revived Issei in the park? You said that you knew what I was. That's right, I guess I should answer these questions that have been on your mind. I guess I should start by saying that I hold sacred gears as well. Naruto said shocking the devils in the room, minus Issei. You hold a sacred gear. But we didn't even sense one in you. Rias said. First, it's gears. Plural. I hold two of them. He holds up a two fingers. And second I've trained with both of them my whole life to so I can suppress the energies that they emit. They are also one of the main reasons that I know about the factions and have been up to date with everything that has been going on. Naruto explained as Rias was deep in thought. He holds two sacred gears. That's unheard of. I knew that it is possible for a human to hold more than one but it has never been recorded before, and he said that he's trained with both of them. He might actually be better help than Issei against him. Rias thought. She then looked at him with a questioning look. By any chance can you tell us the names of your gears? Rias questioned, curious about what ones he held. That, my dear Rias-chan, is a secret. Naruto said as he placed a finger over his mouth in a shushing motion as he grinned. Rias blushed slightly as he added the, Chan, suffix to her name but pouted mentally as she didn't get to know his what his two sacred gears were. In that case I would like to offer you something. Stop right there. Naruto said interrupting Rias. I know what you are about to ask and the answer is no, I will not become a member of your peerage. He said sternly. Rias pouted at that and was about to ask why when Naruto answered, it's not that I won't join. Well, actually I don't want to, it's just that I can't. My sacred gears won't allow me to be reincarnated into a devil, angel or fallen angel. It's just because of their nature. Rias thought over what the blonde said and was even more curious as to what kind of sacred gears he possessed if they had the power to resist transforming the teen into a devil, but she was confused why he said angels and fallen angels. She might have to ask him or her brother at a later date. Okay, I'll leave you alone then. Rias said to Naruto as the blonde nodded. Good, now then. Issei, can you come over here for a minute? Naruto asked as the brunette made his way towards him. I'm going to do both you and Rias a favor and activate your sacred gear for you, so don't freak out okay? You can activate this thing. Issei asked in surprise as Rias and her peerage looked the same as well. Well I have unlocked my sacred gears already so I know what to do. Plus one of the abilities they both grant me is the knowledge about how the gears work, so raise your left hand up and stand still. Naruto said as, Issei raised his left hand up and Naruto placed a finger on his palm. The top of Issei's hand glowed green for a couple of seconds before Naruto let go of the boy's hand and told him to do as Rias told him to do the first time. Issei did as he was told as started to focus again on the power now coursing through his arm and shut his eyes in concentration. He felt the energy start to build up in his hand until. Flash. Issei opened his eyes and freaked out once he saw his hand had something on it. It looked like a red, armored bracer with yellow accents and a green jewel on top of the palm area. However, his fingers weren't covered. Wah what the hell is this? Issei screamed in shock. Your sacred gear Issei, and it seems to look like a twice critical. Naruto commented as he inspected Issei's gear. But it feels different for some reason. Well, thank you very much Naruto. Issei if you would come over here for a moment I have an important job for you. 
Rias said as Issei got out of his shock and walked towards Rias for his first job as a devil. Well, that was quick. Naruto said as he sat back down on the couch. I'm surprised as to how well he took it. Normal people would probably go mad from the information they received in one night. I guess he's special, though, isn't he? Akino said as she stood by him. Yeah, special. Naruto whispered as he looked towards the teen as he was yelling about getting his own followers and making them do perverted things to him. He sighed and hoped that the boy's perverted nature changed soon, but at the same time he hoped it didn't. He then watched as Issei left with a large bag filled with the same flyers he had received before his reincarnation as a devil and went out to deliver them, perfect. Hey, Rias, I need to talk to you about something. Naruto said gaining the redhead's attention. What is it? It's about the fallen angel who first went after Issei. She isn't gone. Naruto said in a serious tone before Rias widened her eyes and turned serious as well. Explain please. Rias said in an almost commanding voice. The fallen angel's name is Rainer and she was originally sent here to observe Issei until she was ordered to kill him by one of the higher fallen angels. Naruto explained. She back off though once she found out that the order was false. I see. That explains why she left so suddenly, but how do you know her name and about her reasons for leaving? Rias asked, now weary of the teen in front of her. That's simple, she's living with me for the moment. Naruto said as he took a sip of the tea in front of him, it was delicious. Living with you, Rias nearly yelled as he rose from her seat. What do you mean living with you? Are you sided with the fallen angels? No, not really. Let me explain. I have known about the supernatural world since I was about six or seven and that was when I unlocked both of my sacred gears after a certain incident. The first of the factions that I met was the angels from heaven who looked after me and told me more about the world and the factions, and not the crap that the church teaches their people. The truth. After they helped me settle down here in this town I accidentally met with the governor of the Gregory, Azazel. Azazel. You know him. Personally. Yes. I had a nice chat with him and we became friends if you could call it that. Because of that I have connections with people from two of the three factions, and now that you know about me that makes people from all three, but that's not the point. When I saw Rainer for the first time and that she was harboring negative feelings for Issei I went to Azazel for information about her and Issei and he told me the truth. And that was. Akino asked in a monotone voice at the mention of fallen angels. Rainer was supposed to be observing Issei and nothing else, but her coming in contact with him was not a part of the plan. When I confronted Rainer about what she was doing the next day she told me that she was ordered to kill Issei by a fallen angel named Kokobiel, one of the leaders of the Grigori. But what she didn't know was that Kokobiel had broken away from the Grigori and became a rogue. Since she didn't know I went to Azazel to work things out with him and he came up with a compromise, if Rainer and anyone else who followed her stopped their little mission for Kokobiel and stayed with me until the whole ordeal was over then they wouldn't receive any punishment. Naruto finished as Rias looked at him in shock at the information that he had and that he had connections with all three factions. So this fallen angel will be staying with you until this whole thing is sorted out. Rias asked just to be sure as Naruto nodded his head. And you said that there were others apart from Rainer on this mission. Yes. Along with Rainer there's also Kalawarner and Mittelt. They won't do any harm to you or the other devils here, you have my word. Naruto said as he held his hand up like he was taking on oath. Okay, I'll take your word for it, Rias said but was still a bit uneasy about the whole thing. And with that the members of the orc carried on with their everyday tasks until they decided to call it a day and went to their respective homes. Man, what a day, Naruto said aloud as he walked back to his home. The sun had just set and the moon was starting to come out, a sign that Naruto had spent more time at the club than he thought. I hope those three weren't worried about me being gone so long. Don't worry about them Narutochi. They know that you can look after yourself so don't think about it too much. Hikari said in Naruto's head putting the boy's mind at ease. Naruto continued walking until he made it to his home. It was a large, ten-story building, complete with three large basements underneath and outdoor pools and spas. One, Naruto entered the building and was greeted by the female receptionist at the front desk who bowed towards him. She was a teen around his age that had long rosy pink hair which is tightly secured with dark pink ribbons and two strange types of equipment on each side of her head where her ears would be, looking like headphones of some kind, with a tint of black on her left and right bangs. She also had emerald colored eyes and an ahoge, which is the long strand of hair that protrudes out of her hair like Rias had. 
She was wearing an unzipped blue hoodie with a white tank top that held her D-cupped S with a blue skirt on bottom with normal shoes. Evening Ikaros, how was your day? Naruto asked the girl as she stared at him with a calm and blank look on her face. Everything was fine master, only two guests checked out today with three more checking in in their place. What about you master? She said in a monotone voice. Everything was fine, and what have I told you about calling me master Ikaros? Naruto asked with a slight glare at the girl but didn't get any facial expression in response. To not call you that, she replied. Sigh, never mind. How's the guests upstairs doing? Naruto asked. He didn't know how the fallen angels would react to him being away for so long since he was in charge of protecting them for the time being and they had grown fond of the blonde's presence in their time together with him. They are doing fine master. I believe that they are playing some sort of game at the moment because you did not return earlier, Ikaros said. Wells that's fine, I guess. Come by later Ikaros and I'll make you something to eat okay? Naruto said as he walked towards the elevator and pressed the button for the penthouse floor. The building itself was funded by the angels when Naruto had decided to move to Kuo and was run by him after it took off and became one of Japan's best hotels, because he runs the place he decided to live in one of the penthouse suites on the top floor. Tadaima, I'm home, Naruto called out as he entered his room. Oh, Naruto you're home. You were gone a while. Rainer's voice called out from around the corner in the living room. Yeah sorry about that, I was talking to some people at school. Naruto said as he took off his shoes and walked into the room. I was sorting some things out with the de. He stopped speaking as soon as he entered the room and pinched his nose to stop it from bleeding out at the scene before him. In the middle of the room was a mat set out for the game, Twister, and in the middle of it was Rainer, Warner and Mittelt wearing only their bras and panties as their bodies were tangled and mushed together in a way that looked more erotic than it was supposed to be. Mittelt was on the ground with her legs spread apart and her body was bent backwards in order to reach the colors she needed and her panties were in perfect view of Naruto as he stood at the entrance. Rainer and Kalawarner were better than her as they were off the ground with the lowly type girl between them but their bodies were mashed together and their s pressed up against each other as they both desperately reached the colors they were after and they were almost kissing as well as they both turned to see Naruto. What were you saying Naruto-kun? Rainer said as Naruto's face was almost the color of tomatoes. And nothing, I'll talk to you later. But why are you playing Twister? Naruto asked as he stopped pinching his nose and got his body functions under control, especially his lower body region. Well you weren't home at your normal time and we were bored of waiting so we decided to play some games to keep us occupied. Left leg green, Kalawarner said as the fallen angels moved their bodies to the color indicated and Naruto blushed at their new position. So you decided to play Twister. And in your underwear. We played some other games before we started playing this but they got boring after a couple of minutes of playing. Left leg red, Mittelt said as they moved once again. And we played strip poker before this and it wasn't as fun with just us around since we all know what each other looks like. Naruto sweat dropped at the poker information. Okay, well I'm going to clean myself up and then prepare dinner, so finish your ladies game and get dressed. Ikaros will be coming as well. Naruto said as the former angels nodded and watched him go into his room. They all released a sigh as they fell to the ground and untangled themselves. I'm glad that Naruto allowed for us to stay here, but I think that we're mooching off of him a bit too much. Kalawarner said as the other two nodded. Agreed. But we have to stay here because of Azazel Sama's orders, what can we do? Mittelt asked. All we can do is wait until this whole ordeal with Kokobil is over until then let's just get dressed and wait for Naruto-kun to get dressed. I can't resist his cooking ever since he made us breakfast for the first time. Rainer said as Kalawarner and Mittelt smirked at her. So it's Naruto-kun, huh? Does dear old Rainer have a crush on someone? Kalawarner asked teasingly as the dark-haired fallen angel blushed. We don't blame you Rainer. Kala-chan and I look at him the same way too. Mittelt said with a blush of her own as Kalawarner has a small one too. Are really? Rainer asked as the other two nodded. Well, let's talk about this later. We have to pack everything away. Rainer said as the former angel started to get dressed and packed all the games away for when Naruto came back out. It wasn't 30 minutes later that Naruto walked back out wearing a plain red shirt with blue jeans with his hair slightly wet from the shower he had and started to prepare dinner for him and his housemates. What do you mean you messed up your first request? Question mark quote. Naruto yelled, asked his little brother as Issei sighed next to him as they were walking to school. 
Just before Naruto had left the orc last night to go home Issei had returned from handing out flyers for summoning requests and Rias had asked for the young devil to handle one of Kaneko's requests since she was double booked. The teen had accepted the offer and went on his way, but when it was over he had forgotten to get a payment for the job was went home empty handed. I just forgot about the payment okay. It's not like my first actual request will go that well. I just hope that Bucho won't be angry at me. Issei whined as Naruto sighed at him. Don't worry, I'm sure she will go easy on you. Naruto reassured him as the teen felt slightly better. Owie, the pair heard a voice whine out as they looked to their left and saw, white panties. Issei gained a perverted look on his face as he saw the rare sight of the girl's white clothing while Naruto looked at the girl with a raised eyebrow. The girl was around 15 to 16 years of age with long blonde hair and green eyes. Her hair flows all the way down to her back, with split bangs over her forehead that could be seen despite the white veil over her head with light blue accents covering most of her hair. Along with it she wore a dark teal nun outfit with light blue accents, a brown satchel slung on her right hip, and brown boots with black straps in an X-shaped pattern. She also wears a silver cross necklace around her neck. What in the world is a nun from the church doing here? Naruto thought as he watched Issei help the girl up like a gentleman. T thank you very much. The girl said before a strong gust of wind came by and blew the head veil off of her head revealing her whole face. She's cute. Issei thought as he looked at the girl with a slight blush. Oh oh, no problem. He said as he quickly let go of the girl's hand in his nervousness. Another gust of wind blew by as the girl's veil started to fly away but Naruto caught it before it could get far. Here, Naruto said as he handed the girl's veil over to her. Thank you, both of you. You're both very kind. The girl said as she places the veil back over her head. No problem, we were happy to help miss, Naruto said. I'm Asia Argento, but you can just call me Asia. Asia introduced herself to the teens, she then began to poke her fingers together cutely and blush out of embarrassment. Hey Anyo, I seem to be a bit lost. Do you think you can help me out? Well, I can't, I have to get to the kendo club and help the girls train, sorry. But I'm sure that Issei can help you find the place you are looking for. Naruto said as he slightly pushed Issei forwards with a smirk on his face. I I will, Issei asked, you will, make sure she gets there safe. See ya later Asia, Naruto said before he started walking away with a wave. Oh okay, wait, I didn't get your name. Asia yelled out to her fellow blonde. Don't worry about it, his name's Naruto Kazama, and I'm Issei Hiodo. Nice to meet you, Issei introduced himself as he scratched his back nervously. I don't know whether to thank you or curse you Nisan. But as long as I get to spend some time with this cutie I say, thank you. He screamed mentally as he and Asia went on their way. Naruto looked back as Issei walked away with Asia in tow before taking out his cell phone and started dialing the hotel. Hey Ikaros, I have a job for you to do. Issei is walking with a nun from the church and I want you to follow her from the shadows and report back to me where she goes. Okay, see you later Ikaros. Naruto hung up and made his way towards school. Things were going to get more interesting around here. DXDDXDDXDDXDDXD. A while later Naruto stood in the ORC's main room as he watched Rias look at Issei with a serious look as the crossed her arms under her bust sternly. Issei, you must never go near the church again. Rias said strictly, for devils like as the church's enemy territory. Just stepping inside will cause problems for both angels and devils, surely you could sense that something was telling you to be careful. So that's what it was. When I got near the church I felt a sudden chill and my left hand tensed up. Issei remembered as he looked at his hand. That was your demonic instincts telling you that danger was near. Rias said as she leaned on her desk. But still, listen to her Issei, she's only looking out for you. Naruto said as he walked up to the brunette. Being close to someone from the church is very risky, especially when some exorcists and priests also possess sacred gears and have more experience in using them. You could get hurt. He said as he watched Issei look and thought about something before he bowed his head in embarrassment. Rias went on to explain that when a devil is killed they are gone for good and they can never come back in any way or form. I'm sorry I got so worked up, I just don't want anyone in my peerage to get hurt. Rias said with a smile that Issei returned before leaving to do another job. After he left Rias brought her hand up to her chin and thought to herself. This doesn't sit well with me. First. A group of fallen angels arrives in town, and now a person from the church. 
What is going on? Rias said to herself. You don't have to worry about the person from the church Rias, I have that covered already. Naruto said as Rias looked at him and blinked. Really? It's no problem for us to look into it. Rias said as Naruto shook his head. It no problem, I met the girl Issei met on our way here. She seems like a nice girl but I was wondering what she was doing here too. I already sent someone to follow her and report back to me of her whereabouts and who she's with. Naruto responded as Rias nodded. Thank you, can you tell me about anything that come up that concerns us? No problem. Naruto said as B began to walk away. Rias looked as Naruto walked away and began to wonder more about the blonde enigma before her and wondered how things will turn out with him with her peerage, and in her life. DXDDXDDXDDXDDXD. Tadaima. Naruto called out as he entered his hotel room. Welcome home Naruto-kun, the voices of Rainair, Kalawarner and Mitelt called out as Naruto turned the corner into his lounge area and for the second day had to suppress another nosebleed at the fallen angels before him. Standing near the entrance of the room were the three fallen beauties all doing a different pose for him as they all wore white lingerie that sent Naruto's mind into overdrive. Rainair was wearing a black laced bra and panties that were practically see-through and the bra seemed two sizes too small for her as he posed with her hands behind her head sitting on the steps leading down to the lounge. Warner was wearing a similar style of lingerie that were blue in color and had its clip on the front that was undone and being held together by the fallen angel as she was posing on the floor between Rainair and Mittelt like she was about to crawl towards him with a seductive grin on her face. Mittelt sitting next to Warner wearing purple lingerie with a thin see-through veil covering her petite body and giving her a more alluring look as she gave Naruto one of her own Y smirks as she leaned on Warner. Sadly though it would be a few more years before she would be able to show any more of her body off. W what the hell are you three doing? Naruto yelled as he pinched his nose while blushing slightly at the sight of them. Ooh, they're good. Yami's voice spoke up from inside Naruto's head as the blonde had an annoyed look for a split second. Shut it, Yami-chan. The three fallen angels all smirked at the desired response they got from the teen and slowly moved closer towards him. We were just thinking that since you allowed us to stay here for who knows how long, we would give you a present from all three of us. Rainair said as she and the girls and crawled forward a bit. That's not necessary, really. Naruto said as he took a step back each time they moved forward. Naruto kept walking backwards until he bumped into something behind him and felt something soft press into his back, or to be precise two somethings. Looking back Naruto saw emerald colored eyes looking at him with a blank look before he jumped back in shock and saw who it was. Ikaros. There you are, where have you been? Naruto asked the girl as he was thankful for the distraction from the erotic scene behind him. I have been following the nun from the church like you asked me to do, was that not what you wanted? Ikaros asked as she tilted her head slightly. No, that's what I wanted Ikaros, just tell me what you found out. Naruto said. In the background, the fallen angels glared at the pink-haired girl in front of them for taking the blonde teen's attention away from them. After the boy named Issei showed the nun to the church in this town, she walked up there by herself and met up with two fallen angels who have made the church their hideout. Wait, did you say two fallen angels? Naruto asked Ikaros nodded in response before Naruto turned around and faced the fallen trio. I thought Donaseek was the only fallen angel to come with you guys. He was. Only the four of us came here on our own following Kokobiel's orders. Warner said as he did her bra back up and started looking for her clothes, knowing that the moment was over. Dot for now. Whoever it is must have come after we found out about Kokobiel's betrayal and left. Mittelt said. That makes sense, kind of. Ikaros can you describe this other fallen angel? Naruto asked. Sorry master, I could not get a good look at him. But I did found out that he had also sent for a priest to come here as well. Ikaro said as Naruto's eyes widened. A priest. That's not good. Rias and her peerage don't know about him. Where is he now Ikaro's? He and the nun were on their way towards a residential area east of here when I thought it best to report back to you. Did I do well? Ikaro's asked. Naruto answered her by walking up to her and patted her head like he did with Kaneko. You did good Ikaro's, really good. You can go and rest now, Naruto said as he finished petting her and sent her into his room until he needed her. Now then, let's see where this priest is. He then started to concentrate on Asia's holy energy that he felt when he first met her and widened his sensing ability to cover the town. After searching for some time he felt Asia's energy but was puzzled at what she was doing. 
What's going on? Asia seems to be near a barrier of some kind no, she's sustaining it. But why? Naruto thought as he used his holy power to see through the barrier and see what was going on. All right I sense two beings inside. One has what feels like holy energy, that must be the priest Asia's with, and the other is a devil, wait. Issei. Naruto yelled as he rushed to put some sneakers on. What's the matter? What's wrong with the Hyodo kid? Rainer asked as the three fallen angels saw Naruto rushing around like a madman. Issei's with the priest at the moment and he's gonna get killed. He hasn't dealt with someone like that before. I have to help him. Naruto said as he finished putting his shoes on and stood in the middle of the living room area. Then let us come with you, we can help. Rainer said. No, with the priest there he will rat you guys out sooner than expected and you will attract the attention of not only Rias when she gets wind of what's happening with Issei, but also the other fallen angels at the church. And if Issei recognizes you he might lash out or be easy prey for the priest. It's best if you guys stay here, and that's an order. Naruto said in a commanding tone before he summoned a yellow magic circle with what looked like two S's overlapping each other, devil gene mark from Tekken, in the middle and teleported to Issei's location. A few moments earlier, Issei sighed for the hundredth time this night as he pedaled away on his bike. Tonight had been a long night for him. Rias had brought him along to see how devils fight by going up against a stray devil called Visor. A waste if he said so himself. How could a devil with such a rock and upper body have such a horrible lower body and a horrible personality? Life really is a like that. During the fight, Issei had also learned about the evil peace system and the different traits that Rias Peerage had in accordance with what chess piece they had. Kiba was at knight and was fast and good with a sword, Kaneko was at rook and was strong, too strong for a girl like her, and Akino was Rias queen, good with magic but he wished he hadn't seen the sadistic side of her as she seemed to get off from watching Visor in pain. And what was worse was that he found out he was a pawn, the foot soldier, the one on the front lines. Chicks do not dig pawns. Now though he was making his way towards a client's house who had originally summoned Kaneko but since she was overbooked again he took it for the rook. He finally made it to the house and rung the doorbell only for no one to answer. That's strange. Issei whispered to himself. Hello. I'm the devil sent here by Lady Grimori. Is anybody home? He called out as he stepped into the house but felt the same chill crawl up his spine as when he was near the church. He was about to go back when he remembered what Rias said to him before he left for the request and proceed to enter despite what he was feeling. He made his way into the living room and noticed the mood lighting as it was a setup for something before he could think any further of it though he stepped in something wet on the floor. He lifted up his left foot and rubbed the liquid off with his hand before stopping and feeling the texture a bit more. He brought his hand up to look at the substance and widened his eyes in shock. As this blood. Looking over towards the source of the blood he quickly covered his mouth from vomiting as he saw cut up human remains in the dark corner of the room. Punish the wicked. Issei heard a voice speak up as he looked towards the couch and saw someone sitting there. He looked to be a young man with short white hair dressed in a priest's clothing that consisted of a black coat and shoes, white pants and shirt with a clerical collar and a golden cross around his neck. Words to live by. Yes, wise advice to heed from a holy man. The priest said as he looked at Issei with a disturbing smile on his face. Well, well, you just walked into the wrong house my friend. Freed sells in here, at your service, and you must be the scared little whose devil ass this holy priest is going to exorcise. Freed proclaimed as he jumped around like a kid. A a priest. Issei said as he stepped back in shock. Yes, I work for a certain devil purging organization you may have heard of. Freed said with a crazy gleam in his eye. So you're the one who did this? Issei asked still feeling a bit queasy. Summoning you was proof that he was done being human. End of the line sinner. So I had to chop him up into little bitty pieces. Freed said as he pulled out a gun and a golden handle of some kind before it formed a light sword. Killing shitty devils like you is all a part of my job. First I'm gonna cut out your evil heart with my heavenly blade of light, and then with my righteous gun, I'm gonna blow a hole in your wicked demon face. How does that sound? Issei acted quickly as he jumped out of the way before the deranged priest could cut him with the sword of light but stopped when Freed shot him through the leg with a holy bullet, which caused the teen to groan in pain on the floor as the priest laughed at him. Damn you! Issei yelled as he faced the priest and summoned his sacred gear. Oh, is the devil angry? Then maybe it's time that I send you back to hell. Freed yelled in joy as Issei rushed at him but the white-haired priest easily sidestepped him and slashed his back. 
Issei fell to the floor paralyzed at the amount of holy energy flowing through his system as Freed raised his sword into the air again. Time to die shitty devil. Freed said as he brought his sword down. Ah. Both priest and devil heard a familiar voice scream out in fear and shock. They both turned around and saw Asia looking at the body parts in the corner. What the hell? Asia what are you doing here? Are you done creating the barrier already? Freed said in an annoyed tone as he watched Asia look at the dead body with fear. Wa what is this? Asia asked in shock. Oh, that's right you're a newbie. This is our kill off the people who have been ensnared by the worthless devils, you see. Freed explained as Asia looked towards him and widened her eyes. Issei-san, what's going on? Do you two know each other? Freed asked, slightly intrigued at the two. Issei why are you here? Asia asked slightly fearing the answer. I'm sorry, Asia, but I'm a devil, Issei said as he looked away from her. No, it can't be true. I didn't want to lie to you, but I thought it best if we didn't see each other again. Issei said as Asia teared up. Not that this isn't heartwarming or anything, but you and your friend here Asia have no business being together. Freed said as he walked over to her. The fallen angels have completely forbidden any forms of contact between us and them, have you forgotten? Fallen angels. Issei thought before Freed placed the sword at his throat. Now then, let's get on with this. Freed yelled as he raised the sword up to slash at Issei when Asia ran in front of him and with her arms spread out protecting Issei who was behind her. Oh come on, are you serious? Please father, forgive this man of his sins. Can't we just let him go? Asia pleaded with the man in front of her as he lowered his blade. Do you know what you are saying? Freed asked, irritated by the girl in front of him. He may be a devil but Issei-san is a good person. You can't just kill him, do you actually think that God would approve of this? Enough of this bullshit. Freed screamed, finally showing his anger at the girl. He quickly swung his sword of light down at the girl and cut her nun outfit down the middle, somehow not cutting her in the process. Even her bra was cut off as they were thrown off and let her s bounce around in freedom. Asia quickly covered herself while letting out a shocked cry as Issei tried to move towards her but doubled over in pain with the bullet wound in his leg. Have you lost your fucking mind? What? Are there maggots growing in that stupid little head of yours? Freed yelled as he as he stabbed his sword of light into the ground and walked over to Asia. He cupped her face as he looked at her in rage. Our fallen angel friend said that I'm not supposed to hurt you, but I don, t give a damn about that now. I think you need a little divine punishment. He yelled as he threw her against the wall and stabbed his sword of light through her sleeves, pinning her against it with her hands above her. Asia. Issei yelled as he tried to stand up. Why can't an outstanding priest like me does what he wants with a filthy tramp like you? Freed said as his hands went to Asia's skirt. It sounds like fun in my book. Then this will be fun for me. A voice said as a hand grasped Freed's face from behind and sent him flying into the coach on the other side of the room. Standing there was a clearly angry Naruto as he had heard saw what the perverted priest was doing the Asia and wanted to crush him. N Naruto-san. Asia said in shock as she looked at the blonde she met earlier. Hey Asia. Don't worry I'm here to help. Naruto said as he took the light sword out of the wall and caught Asia before she fell. He walked her over to Issei as the brunette crawled towards them. Thanks Naruto. I don't think I could have saved Asia in time. Issei said as he removed his blazer and DD it over Asia in an effort to conceal her body. No problem. Just stay down and rest. I'll deal with the priest. Naruto said, looking back to where he threw the priest and picked up the light sword. As he walked towards the priest he brung up the sword to block an incoming bullet heading straight for his face. You shitty devil. Who the hell do you think you are? Freed said as he held his gun up. I'm no devil you prick, and I'm the person who's going to kill you. Naruto said as he rushed at the deranged priest. Freed fired his gun as Naruto blocked the bullets with his sword and slashed at him when he got close, the white-haired man moved left and right as he tried to dodge the slashes and was doing well before Naruto deactivated the sword for a moment and moved into his personal space. Before the priest could react Naruto reactivated the sword with his own light energy as a golden colored blade shot out and managed to cut the holy man in his side and kicked it when he winced in pain. Sinner. That was a cheap shot. Freed yelled as Naruto smirked. So what? Devils aren't the only beings in the world who can play dirty you know. Naruto said as he readied his blade. Now hold still while I end your miserable life with my new sword. That's my sword you little shit, and you're welcome to try if you think you can kill me. 
Freed challenged him with a crazed look in his eye as Naruto rushed at him. Before he could make it far though a red magic circle appeared between the two before the members of the orc walked out. Hey there Issei, Naruto. We're here to help. Hiba walked out as he wielded a sword and stood by his fellow blonde. Era, Era, this is quite the problem. Akino said as she looked at the state of the room. An exorcist. Kaneko said in as she looked blankly at Freed. Seriously. You guys have like the worst possible timing ever. Naruto said deadpan, but was more relaxed at the sight of them. Sorry about that, we would have come earlier but there was a barrier in the way. Rias said as he was the last to make it through and looked at Naruto. He he he, now this is a party. Seems like we have ourselves a good old-fashioned gangbang. Freed said in excitement as he stood up. You haven't bleed out yet. How troublesome. Naruto said as he raised his sword. Not yet I haven't, but before we continue I just have one question. Freed said with a raised eyebrow. You and the pretty boy there. What's the deal, you're the pitcher and he's the catcher. Bastard. Naruto gritted out at the gay reference. For a priest that's quite the mouth you have there. Hiba said calmly but gripped the sword handle tighter, angry at the reference too. Like I care what you think, get of your high horse douchebag. Hunting your kind is my only concern, so stop preaching and let's get to it. Freed yelled. My, this guy certainly is a piece of work, wouldn't you say Bucho? Akino asked as she looked at the priest with an intense stare. And you my dear are a hot piece of ass. Oh, those eyes are killing me. There's nothing I lust after more than a Y devil. Freed rambled on as he hugged himself. Disappear. Rias said as she launched her power of destruction at the priest who rolled out of the way. Nobody messes with one of my servants. So you must be the big cheese, huh? Looks like I may be a bit out of my league here. Freed said as he moved back a bit. Keniko, who was holding a sofa above her head, tensed as he looked towards the peerage. Fallen angels, incoming. The next moment the ceiling above them started to turn a dark purplish color and a portal of some kind appeared. This is not good, Naruto thought. Rias, take Issei and get out of here. We can't take these fallen angels at the moment. Right, Akino prepare to jump. Rias ordered as Akino prepared the teleportation circle. Kaneko, you take care of Issei. Okay. The girl said as he threw the sofa away, hitting Freed who was distracted by the portal above him. B. Bucho. Wait. Issei yelled as he was slung over Kaneko's shoulder. We can't leave yet, what about Asia? I'm afraid that only members of my household can jump with this magic circle, sorry. Rias said sadly. But, don't worry about it Issei. I'll take care of her, you just get out of here now. Naruto said as he deactivated the Sword of Light and put it in his blazer before placing a hand on Asia's shoulder. Both blondes watched as the orc made the jump and left them alone with the priest. Are you ready to leave Asia? Naruto asked the nun as a stigma appeared on the back of his hand, the same symbol his magic circle had. H hi, the nun said as she saw the mark on the back of Naruto's hand. Okay, now hold on tight. The jump will make you feel a bit queasy afterward. Naruto warned the girls as she nodded and left in a yellow flash. What the hell was all that? Freed said as he looked around at the empty room. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.